Cumple tus objetivos con el inglés. Un año de inglés con el apoyo de los mejores tutores online. Apúntate en curso de inglés online tve.com y por menos de un euro al día. Hello. Listen. He doesn't know how to play rugby, but his wife does. Curioso que la mujer, la esposa sí sabe jugar al rugby. Él no. He doesn't know how to play rugby. But his wife does. Pigaro. Hmm. Strangers in the night? No. I don't know how to sing, but Marta does. Yeah. Yeah. To play the guitar. I don't know how to play the guitar, but Mateo does. She doesn't know how. She doesn't know how to speak English, but her husband does. The president of this country doesn't know how to speak English. But the vice president does. Uh, the, the king of Spain doesn't know how to play golf, but Olafamal does. I don't know how to speak German, but Silvia does. Hola y bienvenidos a la clase 143. Ahora vamos a ver la frase, he doesn't know how to play rugby, but his wife does. Él no sabe cómo jugar a rugby, pero su mujer sabe. Entonces, ahora vamos a ver la primera parte de la frase. He doesn't know how to. Sí, él no sabe, pero no podemos dejarlo solo con he doesn't know. Cuando estamos hablando de él no sabe cómo, ¿te recuerdas que sí tenemos que meter how to? He doesn't know how to. No olvides la preposición how to. Two. Entonces, vamos a ver más ejemplos. I know how to speak some Spanish. Yo sé cómo hablar un poco de español. She doesn't know how to speak Portuguese. Ella no sabe cómo hablar en portugués. Y Philippa doesn't know how to play chess. Philippa no sabe cómo jugar al ajedrez. Ajedrez, la palabra del día. Chess. Do you know how to play chess? ¿Sabes cómo jugar al ajedrez? Chess. What a busy day. Parece que Mildred no sabe limpiar los suelos. Mildred doesn't know how to clean the floors. That's right. He recibido una queja y aquí dicen pues que Mildred no sabe limpiar los suelos. That Mildred doesn't know to clean the floors. Pero esta queja está fatal. Mildred doesn't know to clean the floors. Pues yo tengo una queja de la queja. It's Mildred doesn't know how to clean the floors. She doesn't know how to clean the floors. No se dice she doesn't know to clean the floors. She doesn't know how to clean the floors. Dilo conmigo. Mildred doesn't know how to clean the floors. Eso es, voy a corregirlo. Y aquí también dice que Agatha doesn't know how to clean the tables. And Dolores doesn't know how to clean the windows. Oh, well, I'm going to tell Mildred how to clean the floors. I'm going to tell Agatha how to clean the tables. And I'm going to tell Dolores how to clean the windows. Sabemos perfectamente cómo decimos fútbol en inglés, ¿no? Fácil, football. Pero aquí vamos a ver la palabra to play rugby. Y no decimos rugby como tantos españoles y como tantas veces lo oigo. Es rugby. R -r rugby. Una vez más. Rugby. Perfecto. Y tampoco decimos play to rugby. Quita la to. Play rugby. Play rugby. Entonces te pongo a prueba con otros deportes. ¿Sabes cómo jugar a baloncesto? Muy bien. Do you know how to play basketball? ¿Sabes cómo jugar al ajedrez? La palabra del día, ¿te recuerdas? Do you know how to play chess? Muy bien. Y más ejemplos con rugby. He doesn't know how to play rugby, but he's very good at chess. Él no sabe cómo jugar a rugby, pero sí sabe cómo jugar. Está muy bien jugando al ajedrez. Chess y rugby. Y jamás play to. Play Rugby. Así de sencillo. Oh, my God! Mira! Es el primer...
primer partido de rugby de la empresa. The first rugby game for our company. It's so exciting. Como? Oh, que no sabias que yo juego al rugby? Pues sí. I play rugby. I do. I play rugby. Y ahora mis compañeros también. They play rugby too. Como que no me crees? They play rugby. I promise. Una cosa. No decimos rugby en inglés, ¿vale? Decimos rugby. Conmigo. Rugby. Otra vez. Rugby. Bien. En serio, mis compañeros juegan al rugby. They play rugby. Pues, Vanessa, no. Vanessa doesn't play rugby. She doesn't play rugby. Pues ni Miguel, no. He doesn't play rugby. He doesn't play rugby either. ¿A quién? Pilar, ¿qué dices? She doesn't play rugby, but I do. I play rugby. Ahora vamos a ver la última parte de la frase, but his wife does, pero su mujer sí sabe. Y no decimos, but his wife knows. Eso no es. Tenemos que usar el verbo auxiliar, but his wife does. Las respuestas cortas, ¿te acuerdas? Muy bien. But his wife does. Perfecto. Y ahora vamos a ver más ejemplos con estas respuestas cortas. I know how to play rugby, but my husband doesn't, en negativo. Yo sé cómo jugar a rugby, pero mi marido no sabe. But my husband doesn't, en negativo. Y otro, Julie doesn't know how to play chess, but Janet does. Julie no sabe cómo jugar al ajedrez, pero Janet sí sabe. But Janet does, y no but Janet knows. Muy bien. Y ahora vamos a ver toda la frase otra vez. He doesn't know how to. No podemos solo decir he doesn't know y a secas. Es he doesn't know how to. ¿Cómo? He doesn't know how to play to rugby. No. Play rugby. Rugby. But his wife does. Hi, it's Mr. Strong. And say hello to these. Okay. Going to tell you about my friend Johnny. Yeah. My friend Johnny is incompetent. Yeah, he can't do anything. But his wife, his wife is very smart. Oh yeah, she's very, very smart. But he's incompetent. For example, for example, okay, well, he doesn't know how to drive a car. Yeah, he doesn't know how to drive a car, but his wife does. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't know how to cook, but his wife does. Okay, cuidado. But his wife does. Porque ahí no podemos decir, but his wife, yes. ¿Ves? Entonces tenemos que repetir el auxiliar. He doesn't know how to swim, por ejemplo. He doesn't know how to swim, but his wife does. Lo mismo con can, right? He can't, he can't swim. Podemos usar la, el mismo verbo para que veas. He can't swim, but his wife can. ¿Ves? Tenemos que cambiarlo. Si es negación, ponerlo en afirmación. So he doesn't know how to do anything. Yeah, he doesn't know how to speak Spanish. Yeah, but his wife does. She speaks very, very well. Mm. Hello again. She just reminded him, in case he didn't remember. She just reminded him in case he didn't remember. To remind is recordarle a otro para que ese otro no, no se olvide. Uh, to remind. To remember is acordarte tú de algo. Pero to remind is uh, pasar eso a otro. Okay? Oye, no te, no, 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 te, no olvides. No te olvides. No se te olvide. It's to remind. She just reminded him. Acaba de recordarle en caso de que no recorda, recordase. O por si no recordaba. Si, so she just reminded him in case he didn't remember. Aquí tenemos dos palabras. She reminded him. Le recordó. Se lo recordó a él por si él no recordaba o lo, lo recordaba. She reminded him, or she just reminded him, in case, in case he didn't remember. In case you come, en caso de que vengas, o por si vienes, eh, por si 
uses his microphone in case you use this microphone, she reminded him in case he didn't remember. <laughs> Bienvenidos a la clase número 143. Y la frase de hoy es She just reminded him in case he didn't remember. Que en español es Ella simplemente se lo recordó por si no se acordaba. Y aquí tenemos el primer punto. Reminded him, que es se lo recordó. Ahora, to remind es recordar. Es decir, que alguien te ayuda a acordarte de algo. No decimos to remember me, uff, no, no, sino es to remind me, que me ayudas a recordar. Ahora, tampoco decimos to remind to somebody, sino to remind somebody directamente. Dentro de esto hay dos formas de decirlo. To remind somebody to do something is the to más infinitivo. Por ejemplo, he reminded me to take my keys o to remind somebody of something, cuando algo te recuerda algo. Por ejemplo, this ice cream reminds me of my childhood. Cuidado con el of. Of my childhood. O, por ejemplo, you remind me of a famous actor. Muy bien. Nos vemos en un minuto. Hi, it's Frank, security guard. I've got yet another problem. Yeah, I know. I've always got problems. Well, that's what happens when you're always keeping an eye out. Well, I've got a problem with my team this time. That's right. Yeah, Lamoretti and McNulty. Yeah, well, they're making a lot of friends in the park. They're being a little too friendly. Now, don't get me wrong. No me malinterpretes. I think it's a good idea to be friendly with the patrons, but uh, we can't get too friendly. So I reminded them. I reminded them that we must be professional at all times. I reminded them that they are here to observe and not to chat with everybody. I reminded them of what it is to be a security guard. I reminded them that you must be serious at all times and paying attention. I reminded them. Eso es. I reminded them. Les recordé. I reminded them that they should be more professional. Yes, I reminded them. Cuidado, no decimos I remembered them. Eso es, me acordé de ellos. I reminded them to be more professional. I reminded them that this is a very serious job. Hola, hemos llegado al segundo punto, que es in case. Es decir, por si. Ahora, in case... Cuidado con la pronunciación. Tenemos que enlazar o no in case, sino in case, in case, para aumentar la naturalidad de nuestro inglés. Ahora, vamos a ver unos cuantos ejemplos. Take your phone in case we need it. Llévate el teléfono por si lo necesitamos. Ahora, ¿cómo dirías tú en inglés? Hay una rueda de repuesto por si tenemos un pinchazo. A ver. Muy bien. There is a spare tire in case we get a flat tire. Y aquí tenemos la palabra del día, spare, algo de sobra, de repuesto o algo extra. Spare, spare. Muy bien. Vamos con otros ejemplos. Call me in case you need anything. Llámame por si necesitas cualquier cosa. Y por último, remind him in case he mentions it. Recuérdaselo por si lo menciona. Muy bien, nos vemos en un minuto. Hi, welcome to the shop that sells everything you need when you need it. Por si acaso no conoces este producto, in case you're not familiar with this product, it's the Multi Remote 800. And in case you don't have one, well, one moment. In case you don't have one. Dilo conmigo. In case you don't have one. Excellent. In case you don't have one, I'm gonna tell you all about it. This remote works on TVs, MP3s, computers, and, well, in case you don't have a TV, an MP3, or a computer, you can come here and you can buy one. And, well, if you don't wanna buy those, it also works with rechargeable batteries. That's right, the Multi Remote 800 works with rechargeable batteries. And in case you don't have rechargeable batteries, well, 
you can come here and you can buy rechargeable batteries in case you don't have them. And in case you're interested, well, this remote, it's only 60 euros. That's right, it's a bargain. Ahora vamos con la tercera parte de la frase de hoy, que es He didn't remember. No se acordaba. Ahora aquí tenemos el verbo to remember, que es distinto a to remind que vimos en el punto número uno. Ahora, to remember quiere decir acordarse uno por sí mismo, sin ayuda externa. Mientras que to remind, como dijimos, era acordarse porque algo te ayudó a recordarlo. Ahora vamos a ver unos ejemplos. Don't remind me. I remember it well. No me lo recuerdes. Me acuerdo perfectamente. Otro. He didn't remember my birthday. No se acordó de mi cumpleaños. Should I remind him? Debería recordárselo. Ahora, did you remember to buy a spare kit? ¿Te acordaste de comprar un kit de repuesto? Y aquí tenemos spare, que era nuestra palabra del día, si os acordáis. Ahora, otro más. They reminded us just in case we didn't remember the memo. Y terminamos con I hope you remember to watch the next class. Muy bien, nos vemos en la siguiente clase. I'm reminding the customers that my lunch time is from 12 until 3. I reminded them yesterday, you know, just in case they didn't remember. And of course, they didn't remember. They didn't remember. Así es, remember. They didn't remember. Remember, my lunch time is from 12 until 3. Ah, I should probably remind them about my break time as well. Remember my break time from 10 to 11. Now they should remember. Oh, what about my coffee break times as well? Coffee, four until five. Remember, my lunch is from 12 till three. My breaks are from 10 to 11 and four till five. And in case they don't remember, I'm going to leave it right here so they have no excuse to bother me. And I'm going to tell the other staff about my breaks. They never remember. Oh, and you. In case you want to speak to me, I'll probably be busy on a break, having coffee or eating lunch, okay? So just remember. Hello. You kept a lot for him. Hmm, you kept a lot from him. Eh? Hmm, I bet you wish you had him now. Eh? It's too late now, my friend. Uh, you kept a lot from him. O sea, le ocultaste mucho tú a él. Le ocultaste mucho. You kept, guardaste mucho, alejado de él, literalmente. You kept a lot from him. Ah, lo, lo guardo para mí. You kept a lot from him, ocultándolo. You kept a lot from him. Ahora, apuesto lo que sea que estás arrepentido. I bet you wish you hadn't. I bet you wish you hadn't. Now it's too late. Now it's too late. You shouldn't have kept so much from him. But you did. You kept a lot from him. And now I bet you wish you hadn't. Sorry, friend. You regret it. I can see. Lord, te arrepientes de ello. I bet you do. I bet you wish you hadn't kept so much information from him. I bet you wish you hadn't. I bet you wish you hadn't. I bet you wish. I bet you wish you hadn't kept so much information from him. Again and welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Here we are back together again with a easy sentence, well, short sentence, shorter than usual. Yes, you kept a lot from him. You kept a lot from him. I bet you wish you hadn't. I bet you wish you hadn't. You kept a lot from him. I bet you wish you hadn't. Corto pero cuesta, I can see. You kept a lot. You kept. Pasado el verbo to keep. Pasado de guardar o mantener. Mantuviste. Guardaste. But you kept a lot from, to keep something from somebody. Literalmente, guardar algo de alguien. No, no significa eso en, en inglés. Es ocultar algo. Yo tengo información que no voy a desvelar a ti. Entonces, te lo voy a, te lo voy a ocultar. Es una información, la oculto. To keep information from you. Es para mí, lo, lo guardo para mí, para mis adentros. And you don't know. I'm keeping information from you. Y nuestro amigo... 
pues ocultó con respecto a otro información. He kept a lot from him. Se entiende información. He kept a lot from him. He kept a lot from him. I bet he wish he hadn't. Hi. Now, I'm normally a quiet person. I'm not a big mouth, un bocazas. At least, I like to think so. Es lo que me gustaría pensar. But, well, lately, I've seen some bad things in the hotel. Yeah, and I don't want to keep them from Harriet. Yeah, I feel like I should say something. But I don't want to be a snitch. Un chivato. I don't want to be a switch, but I don't like keeping things from Harriet. Yeah. Cuidado. To keep things from someone is ocultar, esconder algo de alguien. Yeah, mantener de alguien. To keep from something. So I don't like keeping things from Harriet. Yeah, I like to be a good employee. Do you keep things from me? Do you keep things from your English teacher? You shouldn't. Be truthful. Be honest about your progress. Yeah? So I don't know, because Mike, Mike is being really lazy. Yeah, and, well, I want to tell her, but I, I don't want to be a snitch, and I don't know, should I keep it from her? Should I tell her? What do you think? Oh, and, and the rest of the employees, I mean, everybody is being lazy, maybe because it's Friday. Oh, man, what a dilemma. Tell her, keep it from her. Oh. Hello again. Mm. You kept a lot from him. <laughs> I bet you wish you hadn't. Ahora te arrepientes. ¿A qué sí? Yeah, le ocultaste mucha información. You kept a lot. Le ocultaste mucho. Se entiende información. You kept a lot from him. I bet. Me apuesto lo que sea. I bet. I bet. Se usa muchísimo en inglés lo de apostar. Mucho más que en castellano. I bet. I bet. I bet. ¿A qué te arrepientas? Eh? O sea, literalmente apuesto, me apuesto a que... Deseas no haberlo hecho. I bet you wish you hadn't. I bet, I bet. To bet is uh, money. To bet in many ways. Uh, hagamos una apuesta. Let's make a bet. To bet. I bet you wish you hadn't. Okay. And the word of the day. Un adjetivo. Brave. Valiente. Valeroso. Con mucho coraje. Con mucho valor. Brave. Soy muy brave de estar aquí tantas horas delante de... Una cámara. I'm brave. You need to be brave. Don't be afraid. Be brave. Wyatt Earp, brave, courageous, and bold. Yes, brave. That's the word of the day. Are you a brave person? Mm. Mm. Ole! Just look at this. It's a beautiful day here in Spain. I bet you wish you were here with me. That's right. I bet you wish you were here at the pool. Such a beautiful day. That's right, we say, I bet. Me apuesto. I bet. I bet you wish you were here with me. Don't you? That's right. Now, all my friends back home, in fact, back home, I bet it's raining now. <laughs> it's so sunny here and beautiful. I bet my friends all wish they could be here at the pool in Spain. It's so beautiful. I even offered. I offered for my friends to come here with me to Spain. I bet they wish now. I bet they wish that they had come with me. I don't know what they were thinking. Really, they should be here. It's so much better here. I bet they wish they had come. They could learn how to make tortilla, Spanish omelet. I bet they wish they had come to learn how to make tortilla. Also, I could teach them how to eat pipas the proper way, the Spanish way. I bet they wish they knew how to do that. Hello again. Yeah. You kept a lot from him. Yeah. You kept a lot from him. <laughs> I bet you wish you hadn't. I bet you wish you hadn't. You wish you hadn't. Deseas no haberlo hecho. You wish you hadn't. Ojalá no hubiera hecho eso yo. I wish I hadn't, I wish I hadn't done that. I'm sure you wish you hadn't done that too. He wishes he hadn't done that. Todo el mundo nos estamos arrepintiendo ahora de haber ocultado esa información. I wish I hadn't kept it from him. I wish I hadn't. Now I wish I hadn't. And I bet you wish you hadn't. 
And I bet he wishes he hadn't. Me he puesto lo que sea que todos estamos muy arrepentidos. Yo sí estoy arrepentido uh, por haber ocultado esta información. I wish I hadn't. Yeah. And I bet you wish you hadn't. <laughs> and I bet she wishes she hadn't. Hadn't y luego se entiende ocultado información. Que no hubiera. Ella desea no haber ocultado información. I wish I hadn't. And I bet you wish you hadn't. Yeah. Kept information. Oh, hello there. I've just been to see Harriet about the mess that Felicity, George, and Mike got themselves into. And she is not happy. I wish I hadn't gone to see her, to be honest with you. I wish I hadn't said I would help that Felicity. She lied to me. She kept things from me. She said that they had put all the complaints in the bin and Harriet had found them. But she didn't tell me that they also locked Harriet out of her office. Oh, God, I wish I hadn't got involved. Come on, tell me. I bet you wish you hadn't got involved, Margaret. That's right, I do. I wish I hadn't got involved. You know, that Felicity owes me a lot. I bet she wishes she hadn't lied to me because she knows what Margaret's like when Margaret's angry. Felicity, where are you? I bet she wishes she hadn't lied to me. I'll get my revenge. I'll make her wish she hadn't lied to me. I will. Cumple tus objetivos con el inglés. Un año de inglés con el apoyo de los mejores tutores online. Apúntate en cursodeinglesonlinetve.com y por menos de un euro al día.